I'm going to be talking a bit about myself. Is everybody okay with that? <laughs> okay, fine. So, um, they asked me to talk about my journey as an actorpreneur. Though. So, I'm an actorpreneur, actually, right? So, actorpreneur adalah something that I coined up myself. Uh, they adalah um, an actor, champo, cham dengan entrepreneur. Dan bagi saya, seorang actor, champo, entrepreneur adalah seorang yang menggunakan um, the skills of acting. Okay, and acting in this talk that I'm going to give you, you will understand, is a science. Okay. Uh, seorang yang menggunakan skills of acting untuk satu menyelesaikan masalah dan kedua untuk profit atau membuat revenue sebab apa-apa bisnes pun first of all now why itu kena penting betul tak your heart has to be at the right place why you do something is important and then secondly secondly it's that you must have a financial goal okay kalau nak jadi seorang entrepreneur ni Now I'm going to relate back to a lot of the talks. I'm going to relate back to a lot of the talks that was happening just now with um, Ultimate and uh, and Joe Flizzo. That was an amazing talk. Let's give them another big round of applause. Yeah, we like that. So uh, let's go back to this whole notion of entrepreneur. I'm going to begin in the very beginning. Okay. So um, when I started, actually, uh, I was a very poor student. Okay. Uh, I was born, uh, just to talk a bit about myself, I was born in uh, PJ. Asunta, anybody born in PJ? Hey, one person. Okay, uh, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, I was born in PJ and I was raised in um, PJ half my life and KL half my life. Okay, um, KL specifically Melawati. I know it's Melawati guy. Hey, uh, two people. Okay, so the thing is, <laughs> I was very bad as a student. Okay, uh, I I think as as uh, the MC mentioned just now, I'm a uh, I was a very attention seeking child. So as when I was small, I was really like I'm Spider Man, nah, nah, nah. you know what I mean. And I always used to watch. I I didn't go to school, right? I I hated school when I was very young. But I went. I stayed at home. I watched TV. And after I watched the TV program, I go to my mother's mirror and then I act it out. You know. So, but I didn't know I wanted to become an actor. Okay. I really didn't know. So as time went by, um, when I was nine years old, I decided I wanted to start working. Okay, uh, because I, I I don't know why I just had this need to help my dad. My dad just quit his job. He was a consultant. He was about to make partner at what was um, then Arthur Anderson, what is now Accenture, but back then, way back then, it was Arthur Anderson. And he said, you know what? I'm going to quit and I'm going to become an entrepreneur. That's what my dad did. So I was like, okay, cool. So then I saw that you know things were not so easy because as a person working with a company, a big company, he had it good, everything was great, everything was paid for. But then he st I started to see him struggle. So I wanted to help him. Okay. So I, I went to his office a lot and I started making coffee for people. Not just him, his staff and his partners and his friends make coffee. I did photo stat, anything, anything I could do to help. You know. Up to the point where I was the youngest person picking up the phone, going ambition convention and exhibition. Hello, and then like you know, it, it's it's that kind of thing that I did that sort of gave me my confidence towards something. But at that time, I didn't know what it was. So I started working, and I was working all the way till I was like 16 years old. Okay, and then I decided. Uh, okay, so when did I work? I worked after school. I worked um, on the weekends. And so that means when people went to play football or hang out on the weekend with friends, I was at my dad's office, all right, sort of helping. And by the age of 16, I was already sort of doing big responsibilities, like I was organizing events. I was doing what, what these guys were doing, you know. And later, I went back to school because I realized I needed friends. I didn't have friends. So I went to school, I had partied, you know, that sort of thing. But I also realized that I didn't like school. So the whole time, right, I was actually a very poor student. I didn't do very well at all, okay, academically. Um, SPM results came out and I failed. Okay, la, I didn't fail. La. It was like 1A, 3Bs. Uh, elective sumo fail. I won't lie. I wasn't interested. I wasn't interested. So. What was I interested in? I was interested in working and I was interested with hanging out with my friends. Okay? So what did I do? 
after SPM, I said, Pa, I want to go to work. But I don't want to work for you. I want to work for other people. So okay lah, go lah work for other people. So I did. I went. I studied in a restaurant called Passage Through India. It's on Jalan Ton Razak. I think it's still there, right? And I was there for about eight months. Um, everything ah, waiter, wash dishes, apa semua, anything under the sun I could do, I did there. And then I stopped. Then I worked for an event company. Okay, and event company, I pasang carpet, pasang lampu ke event, travel from one state to another, apa apa je. And then suddenly. Dapat opportunity Untuk jadi DJ dekat mall Yeah, I, I pun DJ juga Macam You know like ultimate And things like that But then I was like Yeah 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 Selamat datang ke Kanda Dan um, hari ini kita ada the Discount 20% 20% 20 Ini dia lagu daripada Ultimate dan Teh Tarik Kru You know that sort of thing <laughs> That was where I started And um, So that was that And then what happened after that was um, I got a job as a production man, uh, Production assistant so that was my first time going into television. And I liked it, but I didn't know that I wanted to become an actor. Then my dad said, after two and a half years of working, he said, Razif, that's it. You got to go get an education now. You're going nowhere. You need to go to school. So I said, okay, fine. I'm going to go to school. So I picked Sunway College. Anybody here Sunway College? One more person. Um, I went to Sunway College, and the first thing I did was I do business. Why? Because my dad did business, and I wanted to be like my dad, you know? So I did business, and then guess what? I failed, because I still didn't like school. And then I was failing, 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 but in between, I was the kind of kid who, how many here, how many here sometimes take semester off, semester on, semester off, semester on? How many of you here do that? Ada? No? My God. Ada? Oh, ada. So wrong. All right, there you go, hey, there you go. Hey, <laughs> I'm not so alone. <laughs> Thank God. Okay, so yeah, but when I took semesters off, I didn't lepa. I worked, right? And I was learning as I was working through my experience. So, having said that, right, uh, I failed business. I went to communication. But when I was in communication, did I do well? You think? No, man, I sucked. <laughs> I was failing like crazy because I still wasn't interested. So, um, that happened, but then while I was doing communication, I did one module, one module which was theatre. Okay, let me tell you about this theatre module. First, first thing, module ni, what I had to do was I had to, I had to pretend. Uh, sorry, I had to. Uh, how do I get my marks for this one? I had to be in a production, in a school production. Fine, no problem. We had to act. Okay, it was my first time acting, and my role was that of a tree. I'm not even lying. Can I jadi pokok, bye. Okay lah, it wasn't just pokok, you know. It was also like harimau, singer, and anything else under the sun except for acting, you know. So okay, fine. I was like, whatever, man. I want to, I want to get the grade, right? I want, I want to pass this course. So I did it. But then one day, the second lead role, bukan the main guy, eh? the second lead role, he was, I don't know, he threw a diva fit or something like that, and then he got kicked out of the play. So the director put a frust and he was like, you, you take his part. So like, oh me? Okay, fine. So I took his part and I did the play and I loved it. But I still didn't know I wanted to become an actor. And then I went back to my communication course, still failing, and the teacher, the director of that course, came up to me every other day. Bukan tiap tiap hari, kadang kadang ada tiap tiap hari tau. But he came up to me and said, Razif, what are you doing with your life? Please join my course. This was the Diploma in Performing Arts in Sunway. Okay? I said, no, 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 no. And this is what I told him. Ray, no. There is no money in acting. You cannot become rich. I want to become, I want to become somebody. Okay? There is no money in acting. I said that. Alright, fine. So then, he came back to me every day and something about, dia tolong membuka my hati. Lah. He just helped me open up and suddenly I said to myself, okay, fine, I'll join his course. So I joined the Diploma of Performing Arts in Sunway and guess what happened then? What do you think? What? Which one? Eh? What? Yeah, man. It was all A's. I don't know why. I just enjoyed it. I loved what I did. So I was very thankful. Alhamdulillah, by like 22. At that time, I was 22, like 22, 23. I already found what I love. But unfortunately, what happened after that? Cikgu tukar. 
Okay, the head of the school came in and he was like, uh, the, the head of the school changed and this person and I had artistic differences. So, guess what? I didn't finish my diploma. I said, yeah, artist, eh? Macam, ah, we don't have the same vision, I'm leaving. So I left. So diva kan bodoh. No, it was stupid. It was very, very dumb, but you know, I did. So, I still was nowhere. I only had SPM. Diploma, tak ada, communication, tak habis, business pun tak habis. I was nowhere. But what did I do? I do what I do best. I go back to work. So, in working, I did work, whatever, um, whatever I could do. And then I started auditioning because I wanted to earn some extra money. Okay? So I started with a newspaper, did some modeling work, and then I did this, that, the other. And then after many, many auditions and many rejections, I knew I wanted to do this because I love the acting. I got my first part in a TV series. And it was the leading part. And at that time, I was working with Lisa Surihani. It was both our first shows. And it was this guy called, very talented guy called Ryan Lee Basker. And you would see him as a drummer in the scene. These are people who work hard. Okay, I don't know why, but Alhamdulillah, I came together with these people. And so, we went on and on and on. And from there, I started working, working, working. It never stopped, Alhamdulillah, again. But, okay, when I was doing quite well, after like four to five years of study, uh, of, of working full-time, no degree, no diploma, no nothing, somebody came up to me and said, Razif, you have to go back to school. And actually, there were two people. One was my mom. And the other was this guy called Zafian Fuzi, which is a, he's a really cool guy as well. You might know him. I think he works for Max Man TV. How many of you guys know Max Man TV? Yeah, exactly. So he works, he works there. He's a very cool guy. And uh, I said to him, look, bro, I believe in what we call the Lim Gotong theory. How many of you know the Lim Gotong theory? Siapa tahu Lim Gotong theory itu apa? You want to try? What, what do you think the Lim Gotong theory is? Oh, well, that's, that's, that's the quote. <laughs> but the theory is this, bro. Let me just share with you. The theory is, I don't have to finish school to own a mountain. He left school very early. Okay? But what Zafian told me after that was quite amazing. He said, Razif, Lim Gotong didn't finish school, but he made sure all his children went back to school. Went to school and finished it. And I think it was something that Ultimate said just now, tertiary education, okay, is not necessary. Tapi, ingat, structure to penting. So the fact that you're going through it now, I'm not asking you to quit school. Finish it. It is important. At what point in your life, itu tak kisah. But get yourself an education. Okay, so never mind that. So what did I do? I went to audition for acting school because I knew if it wasn't working, it's acting that I love. Okay, fine. So uh, I auditioned for an, a school called East 15 Acting School dekat London. Right? It's an amazing acting school. 20,000 people apply in one year, right? but only 200 people get through in one year. Okay? Because they have 10, 20, people, 20 people per course and they have 10 course intakes. So I was very lucky. I worked hard. I called my old teacher, the guy yang selalu datang ke ayah semua, and said, you have to be an actor, you have to be an actor. And I asked him to help me audition. I made the audition, dapat, and guess what? I got through. So it was it wasn't very you know it was it was an amazing feat for me but when the school asked me so you nak buat apa I check out oh I had a diploma ke ke I uh, boleh buat degree terus but I tak ada apa I ada SPM je kan dia kata oh what have you been doing this time so I showed them my my CV all the work that I did oh they said oh this is crazy you've done a lot of work we'll give you a masters so I I was like wow best thing first of all it was shorter which means cheaper and I got fast track to a master's. So, Alhamdulillah, I took it up. And so I success. I effectively jumped from SPM to a master's. But trial and error, trial and error, trial and error, talking about the school of hard knocks that Ultimate and Joe were talking about just now, that's the thing, right? I was going through all that hard process, the, the hard work to get there. So, do, do you understand where I'm coming from or not? Okay? Then I came back, right? And I started, uh, I went to a party, confirm, uh, this industry, you're going to party. I'm not even going to lie to you. Okay? And um, I met some people, and they were auditioning for a food show called Best in the World. Uh, how many, have anybody watched Best in the World here? Uh, yeah? Cool. Three people. Nice. Uh, 
Thank you. Uh, yeah, so it's a food show. I did the audition and I passed. And that was when I started back my track here in Malaysia. But it was a lot, it was very difficult. Yeah, it was very difficult. But my heart, right, was in acting. And that's why I'm an entrepreneur. So what did I do, right? I started off as an entertainer ever since I was a kid because I was always like, I'm Spider Man. And um, I, I sort of, followed the entrepreneurial spirit as I was going along because I was you know, following my dad's spirit and then when I came back and I couldn't find a job while I was working on Best in the World, I had to teach because I had a master so I could teach, right? So I also fell in love with education but if you, if you notice nowadays, I don't do much acting do I? Siapa pernah tengok I film? Siapa pernah tengok I dalam TV or drama? Pernah? Huh? Maybe back then lah. Yeah. But I don't know if you guys know. Um, have you guys heard of Golan Ginchu back then? Okay, so I did that back then. But nowadays, I don't do it anymore. And I call myself an actor. Why? Because for me, again, you don't need to be on screen to have the heart of an actor. You just need to use the quality and the skills of it to solve whatever problem and generate the kind of income that you need. Right? You have your social mission and you have your financial mission. Obviously, I have a financial mission, everybody knows that, but what is my social mission? F-talent. One day, after working with a lot of Malaysian actors, right, I got very frustrated. Okay? Very frustrated. I was walking back home, walking uh, from Bangsa to my mom's house, I was going to visit my mom. And I sat down and I had a coffee at this place called Pulp Cafe. Anybody been to Pulp in APW Bangsa? No? Everybody? No? Pernah pergi? Pulp, APW Bangsa? Okay, you got to come, man. It's a very cool coffee shop. So I was sitting down there and I think what tempat ni, it was like a hangar tau. It was like an old printing factory. So I jalan-jalan kat tempat ni and there was like this big empty space. I said, you know what? I want to teach acting and I want to teach it here. Because I want people to know that acting is not about talent. It's about skills. And that's why we call ourselves F-Talent. Because F stands for future. It's what we want to do. So, what are we? F-Talent is an acting school. We are a freemium acting school. And we aim to be the best acting school in Malaysia, providing world-class education. All right? What we do, every other Tuesday in uh, APW Bangsa, where we, where we were just now, um, uh, we have a community class. And this community class is absolutely free. Okay? Tapi, kita tak beri class ni kepada pelakon saja tau. Okay, uh, by the way, uh, any language, anybody is, is uh, welcome to come, as long as you're above 18 years old. Okay? Now, the thing is, why we give free classes here every other Tuesday is because we want to change people's mindsets. We want to introduce to people that acting is not, you know, fluff. Okay? And I'll tell you why in just a bit. Um, we're also a tech-based acting school. That's why we're here in Magic. Um, I was introduced to Magic when we were developing our app. Okay? Uh, we are the only acting school in the world, I can assure you this, because I keep track in what's happening in America and in the UK. They have the best acting schools in the world. Um, I, was, I was keeping track with them, and none of them have developed their own app. We have, right? And we're, we're testing it out in three universities, including Aswara, UM, and UITM. And um, how we make money, though, what we do is we train people. It's about two in the beginning, I check out. You know, I'm not used to talking about myself. I'm, you know, so if you can see I'm a bit keko here, it's like that. But, you know, I'm more used to teaching. Teaching the craft of acting so that you can improve yourself. Okay? Tapi, kenapa buat ni? Why was I pissed off when I was walking home from Bangsa to my mom's house? I'll tell you why. We did a survey for our school. I go up to Malaysians and I check out at you. Kak, here's 20 ringgit. You nak tengok Hollywood film ke? You nak tengok Malaysian film? How many of you say Hollywood? Exactly. Sembilan daripada sepuluh orang, I tanya, cakap Hollywood. It's not even a good Hollywood film. It's just a Hollywood film. 
They would rather watch that than a Malaysian film. So I tell you, kenapa? Oh, bang, macam ni lah, director dia lagi power, budget ni apa semua kan. I say, okay, okay, fine. But does the quality of the acting eh, have anything to do with your decision-making process? The quality of the acting. They check up, yeah. Nine out of nine will answer yes. Macam mana? USA orang kat Hollywood, you think people in Hollywood, people in the UK, people in Australia are more talented than Malaysians? How many people feel they're more talented? Exactly, if you don't have your hands up. You know why? It's because they have training. They have the right training. They have had really good acting schools that have taught them, that have existed for like over a hundred years. Okay? This is why they're good. And we here do not understand that it is part of an education. Kita tak tahu macam mana nak belajar menjadi seorang pelakon. Kita tahu, oh, a handsome sikit, um, you know, a, a popular boleh jadi marketing apa semua. Cantik ah, Man, that's not what makes an actor. Okay? So, how did this happen? Kenapa kita tak invest orang kita yang minat nak jadi pelakon, who wants to become an actor, to become an actor? Right? Three reasons. Your parents. Actually, one reason. Your parents. My parents. Myself. Remember the first thing I said when the guy came up to me? He said, Raz, you have to become an actor. You have to join my course. I, I said, no. There is no money in acting. That's what I said. And, and I, I, I listened back to myself and I see, that's not me. That's my father telling me. There is no money in acting. They will tell you, you're not good looking enough to be an actor. They will tell you, you're not talented enough to be an actor because they don't want to see you fail. But how many of you dalam hati, sebenarnya lah, right? How many of you here in your heart, at one point of time in your life, said, I want to become an actor? Put up your hand. Right? What do you do now? No, I know you work in magic. What, what do you, who put up their hands just now? No, sorry, I was you. Yeah. Website developer. Sorry? You're a website developer as well. But you wanted to become an actor. Did anybody tell you you couldn't? You couldn't. Somebody told you you couldn't do it. Yeah, sorry, your dad. Yeah, you see, ini lah masalahnya. Ini lah Malaysia. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy. So, because we don't believe, uh, because nobody is telling you that you can and that you should move up in your life, right? This is what is stopping us. Okay. But I'll tell you what I learned in acting school. And I'll tell you what, you will learn it in your school and you will learn it here in Magic. All you need to do in life is have hard work, determination, perseverance, and don't ever, ever, ever give up. You are the attitude ni, eh? you buat apa pun you akan berjaya. You can do anything and succeed. Alright? And that's why we have people like Michelle Yeoh. You think she was lucky? She worked hard, man. She went to, she went to combat school in, in Hong Kong. She had to groom herself. She went to acting classes. And then she had to go meet directors after directors after producer after producer after casting after casting after casting. And look at where she is now. But she knew where she wanted to go. So what I'm saying is you can. Okay? The thing is, you have to see a film as a product. Okay? We, look, we talk about Malaysian film, right? And there's many components. Yes, storytelling, one thing. You have your camera angles, etc., etc. Those are all fine. But you must remember that acting is a component. Okay? And if your actors are not doing well in the film, the product is flawed. Dia macam beli benda ni, tapi dia dah crack kat sini. Siapa nak beli? Would you buy a product that's cracked? And that's why we don't want to watch our films. Okay? It's one of the reasons. There's many things to improve, but acting must be improved. So, basically, what we do in F Talent is we want to change the minds of people. Uh, kepada semua orang yang ada kat sini, you are welcome to our free community classes dekat Bangsa. Uh, please, um, kalau nak tahu, just find us on Facebook, F Talent, and like our page so you can tahu bila kelas seterusnya. Then, Anyone is welcome, as long as you're above 18 years old. I see some girls over there. Sorry, you're not invited. Yeah, you're like, yeah. <laughs> looking back. All right. So that's that's pretty much it. So what's what's the moral of the story? This whole Twitter, right? Well, 
I think the first thing, and I want to tie it back up to the whole thing with um, Ultimate and what Joe said, is that it's all about the right time. You can do anything in your life, just, just keep doing it hard. But the time will come when something will happen for you. It's, it's all about the timing. The second thing is the right attitude. It's all about hard work, determination, perseverance, and never ever give up. And finally, and most importantly, you must remember, there is no such thing as right or wrong. Your parents, if they tell you you can't do something, they're not right, they're not wrong. Love your parents, respect your parents, but the only person who can tell you that what the truth is, 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 yeah. Thanks. Hello, is this working? Great, I think he deserves another round of applause. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. Does anyone in the crowd have questions for him? Yes, we have one here. Hello. Right. Um, it's a very noble cause with F Talent. Um, at what point do you think that you consider F Talent successful? You think? At what point will we consider F Talent successful? I, do you think it's so far? Is, is it working all right so far, or is, is it? Okay, F Talent has Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, so F Talent is still an idea. We have run for two years. We have only very recently structured our financial goal, right? And we have only very recently structured properly our social goal and our cause for change for the industry. I don't think. Um, I don't think there's going to be an end game for now, but I think every small win we have, every person's mind we change, is a small success every day. Does that make sense? As long as we're able to sustain ourselves as a, as a free school for everyone, right? We're, we're, we're doing okay. Sorry? Uh, so long as you guys can sustain financially and you are able to change the mindset. Yeah, it's, it's for a social cause, you know. I mean, I, to me, if everybody here understands yang, that acting, Blakun, is something that can be learned, it is a skill, not a talent, you can make money out of it, right? I can, I can be, and I don't need to be good looking, I don't need anything, I just need to want to be, right? And stop telling other people that they cannot become actors, I've won something. So it's a success on a day-to-day -day basis. F Talent per se is not a business for absolute financial goal. It is a, it is, um, it, it needs to have a sustainability as its model. That's that's All it. Best, right? Thank you. Are there any more questions from the crowd? No question. Does, was yeah, it you? Hey. Does anyone else have a question? Okay, then I have actually a couple of questions of my own. Sure. Okay, so you're saying basically that you don't have to be born with any talent in order to become a great actor, is that right? Yep. Do you think that's the same with singing? Yes. Really? That's good news for my dad because like he sings really badly and he goes like, I wish I could learn how to sing. Guys, siapa kat sini pernah dengar profession vocal coach? Angkat tangan. Singing classes. Siapa pernah dengar about singing classes? Ada, ada wujudnya singing classes. What does it tell you? Huh? Sorry? You can learn it, right? Yeah, but the people who go for those classes usually can sing already. They just want to get better. No. no. There are people who cannot sing and you go for those classes to learn how to sing. Okay. I have another question for yeah. you. Okay. How do you define success? How would you? I mean, I, I know everybody has a different answer, but how would you define it? Um, net worth, 50 million USD, two houses. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, how do I define success? I, I think as long as you're happy with what you're doing with your life, um, that, that is a form of success. I think a lot of people, the, one of the struggles um, that a lot of people have is really identifying what they love and what it is that they will fight for and live for and, and die for, right? Uh, that is the struggle every day. 
uh, money will come, money will go. Uh, that's all a matter of how you you build it in your head. But kalau kita jumpa apa yang kita, you know, if we find ourselves, that is the definition of success. And then maintain staying on that course because sometimes we find it and then we lose it, and then we find it and then we lose it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anybody feels that? Kan kan kita yeah, and then oh yeah, you know, that keeping uh, keeping that on a day to day basis is. Success. Yeah, because I think actually a lot of people, especially when they're children, kind of know what they want to be. Yeah. You know, um, and then and then all the noise from the world comes in. Yeah. As as you mentioned, you're never going to make enough money doing that. You're not good enough. Yeah. How do you remind yourself that actually I can do this, and this is what I want to do, and this is the path that I'm going to take, regardless of what everyone else is. Um. Okay. So, I think this really has to do with. Well, for me, it was acting. Because as an actor, uh, just sharing some skills as an actor here, the first thing you have to ask yourself, the, the first thing an actor needs to know is 10 things. Who am I? Where am I? When is it? Where was I five minutes ago? What do I want? Why do I want it? Why do I want it now? What happens if I don't get it now? How do I get what I want by doing what? And what are my obstacles? Did if you get that? <laughs> if, you, if you understand this, right, you will be able to gauge your scene. So, in life, right? Have you, how many of you have heard Shakespeare say, all the world's a stage? How many of you have heard the term wayang? Kita macam, oh, kita pergi, kita pergi kerja, kita wayang lah, depan boss kan? Kita pergi meeting, kita buat wayang sikit. Betul tak? You've heard this? And even Ultimate mentioned just now that we're all taking roles though. We're all different people. I'm a different person here. No, I'm not a different person. I'm just, I'm Razif speaking to everybody here. And then I'm going to go home and I'm Razif talking to my family, and then I'm Razif with my friends, and then I'm Razif with my colleagues. You know, they're all different um, scenarios. So, um, to come back, wait, your question was how do we keep it together, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, so understanding this, kita kena, we have to uh, have the right understanding of our grounds, okay, by asking ourselves these questions. And acting, gives me that knowledge. Macam mana untuk lakukan ni? How, how to build this? And um, the one thing, right, the, the one thing that, uh, the, sorry, there's two questions within the 10 questions just now that really um, plays a big part to this. First is, what do I want? Apa, what, what do you want? What do you want? What do you want? It's, it's very important for you to understand. And how am I going to get what I want? By doing what? If you understand these two things, half the battle is won. Because really, it's the niat. It's the nawaitu. You know what I mean? It, it's your intention. Whatever it is, as long as it comes from the right place, you should be fine. And identifying it clearly, you can do that. Okay, and I think with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's thank him for sharing with us today. Thank you, Razif. And we'll be back in just a few moments with our next speaker, Reza Saleh. So thank you and make yourselves comfortable. We'll be back in just a few minutes.